Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of a guy with no woodworking skills attempts to show you all woodworking. You now join me live in my living room where I'm going to attempt to make something that's been a lifelong dream of mine. Well, lifelong is more like since last November when I thought of the idea. And that's really to make a built-in bookshelf with space for cabinets and a TV. And for the fun of it, I'm going to add a rolling ladder because I think it would look really nice. Well, at least to me. I honestly really like the design, but the real challenge is going to get it made. And before I do that, I do want to apologise if some of the shots aren't as well lit or in focused as I'd normally like them to be, because I'd say about 90% of the shots here were done at night, usually after I'd gotten home, and let's just say the lighting in these rooms isn't exactly the best. Plus, the Canon ADD, which I use for filming, doesn't exactly handle dark scenes as well as I would like to. Also, if you're wondering where the TV console I made previously is, well, it's in the dining room, being used for the old TV and for storing my turntable and vinyl. I'm not really going to get into vinyl in this video, but let's just say it was no mistake that the holes were the exact type of vinyl and the hole in the centre was the perfect size for the turntable. But obviously, that's another discussion for another day. Let's get into making the cabinets. And when I say making the cabinets, well, that's a little bit of a lie. Because if I was going to make them myself, I think I'd need about three weeks for making it. It took me about a week and a bit for the old cabinets, and I would essentially need three of them. So instead, I took the quicker, sort of lazier option, and I got three Bester TV cabinets from Ikea. I think they're a bit expensive for what they are. They're about 250 bucks a piece, and that is 250 bucks for what essentially is particle board, honeycomb mesh, and MDF. But it would shave about three weeks off the project time, and it was probably the same price as making it myself out of pine. Except obviously the material isn't as great, but for what it's worth, it should be just fine here. Plus if you couple that with the fact that these were the only cabinets that were 1.2 meters wide, which when perfectly butted up against each other are the exact width of the room, it was a bit of a no-brainer. As you can see, I now have two of them in place, but before I move in the third one, I do need to deal with the internet box first. These are the boxes that deal with the internet. The one on the right is a battery backup, and the one on the left receives the fiber optic cable, which is fine and all, except they've put it in a pretty awkward spot. You know, I've lived in three different apartments in the past four years, and they always seem to put them in the strangest of spots. This one here is no exception. The plan here though is quite simple. I'm going to move it so it fits entirely inside the cabinet and is hidden. Now I should probably be clear, this isn't the proper way to move cables, what is essentially, what, 30 meters on a wall and past a wall stud, but we all make strange decisions at 2 a.m. And in any event, the wall does need repainting anyway, so this will all get covered up. Now before I go any further, I do need to cut up some 2x4s, because I'm building a frame underneath the cabinets for the cabinets to sit on. I don't want to have to tear up all the timber mouldings at the bottom of the wall, just in case I want to tear this down one day, and all of this can be pretty much reversible. the frame is going to get screwed into the wall studs and it will then get screwed into the cabinets just to make everything a lot more rigid and that's what it looks like with the cabinets put on top and on top of it it's also going to receive some laminated pine boards which I'm going to leave unpainted
With the bottom half now roughly put in place, I'll now start to make the bookshelves. And like last time, I'm going to be using laminated pine boards that are sold at Bunnings. It's not really my first choice for wood. You know, for one, I wouldn't mind making this out of hardwood, but they don't sell hardwood laminated panels that are this size. And if I did try to get the hardwood panels from a proper timber supplier, I think I'd be up for multiple thousands of dollars more than I'm already paying for this. So at least at the moment, pine is the obvious choice. And at least for me, I do prefer to use pine over something like veneered particle board. And can I just say, it definitely takes a lot more wood to make these than you think that it would. Now if the internet has told me anything about woodworking, it's that for something like this, a pocket screw is a good option for holding everything together. Mostly because you aren't screwing into the end grain of wood, which is probably a good thing. You know, that's probably true. But I'm also faced with the fact that I did buy the jig for 30 bucks, so I do feel obliged to use it at least once. And I think three screws on each side will do the job just fine. Plus I'll also get an extra screw or two in the middle to go into the wall studs because this bookshelf isn't getting a backing panel and doing this is gonna make it a lot more solid. Nothing left to do but try to get it put together as square as possible. And that is mission almost accomplished. The one on the right looks pretty good, although the one on the left will need some tinkering around to bring it into squareness. I doubt that the wall is perfectly vertical, but there are one or two things I can probably do. Apart from that though, they're looking really good so far. I can now get them painted with a polyurethane clear coat that'll both seal the wood and make the wood a little bit harder and hopefully protect it from dings and dents. Now I was on the fence about painting it, but I used real wood here so I think it's worth at least showing it, even if it is pine, though at least to me, I don't think pine is as bad of a material as some people make it out to be. I don't think it's that bad, but if you talk to some woodworkers, they despise pine so each to their own. It's my bookshelves, and I think they look just fine. And before the bookshelves are put back in place, I'll get the boards screwed into place. And with them in, I'll now get the bookshelves screwed into the wall studs.
And with that done, I'll now get the middle boards screwed into place. Definitely not the easiest thing to do by yourself, but some wooden planks sawed down to length did help me out here. And it's important to note that the middle shelves aren't going to be used for books. And that's really in an effort to keep the weight down, so hopefully they don't sag over time. And with the middle support columns now in place, that is pretty much the basic bookshelf done. All in all, I'm actually really happy with how it all turned out. But we still aren't done yet. There are some gaps in the woodwork, and they will require some timber moulding. First and foremost though, let's fix the bottom. The 2x4s aren't exactly the nicest things to look at, so they are going to be covered by some DAR pine. The end profile needs to fit the existing moulding pattern, so I cut out a cardboard template to trace onto the wood, and then I can now cut that out with a coping saw. And for the first time doing actual coping work, I like to think this turned out just okay. I also couldn't find an exact colour match on the trim, so I went with oak. Well, when I say I couldn't find it, I accidentally found it a few weeks later when I was in a completely different section of Bunnings. So that will probably need to be replaced sometime down the track. I can now nail everything in place and then get it painted with some colour matched paint to match the walls. We can now get the shelves put in place and the doors put on the cabinets. And to be honest, if there's one joy of buying stuff from IKEA, it's that the holes for the cabinet hinges are pre-drilled and pre-spaced. And with that done, I can now do the internal moulding. And with all that now done, that is the basic bookshelf now complete. And I for one could not be happier with how it turned out. It was about four weeks of doing this at night and on the weekends, and in total, it was about 1500 bucks all up. Now at this point, I could have probably left it like this, and I would have been really happy with how it turned out, but I still want that rolling ladder. But before I do any of that, I think someone has been patiently waiting and requires his nighttime walk. So let me do that, then I'll get onto the rolling ladder. You now join me a few days later. Mostly because it took me a few days on actually figuring out how to add this rolling ladder. Now to no one's surprise, proper rolling ladder hardware is a pretty niche bit of equipment and that's never going to be cheap. But there certainly are a few workarounds. I've been to Bunnings and I've bought myself some more 2x4s. This will be for a frame for the ladder rail to bolt onto. And in turn, the frame is going to be bolted into the studs and onto the bookshelves. On the hardware side of things, I bought myself two sets of barn door tracks. Apparently, this is a really popular way of doing this. The tracks and the rollers aren't too different from each other, and this was a lot cheaper. In all, two sets set me back about 120 bucks. And I had to get two because the rails on this are only 1.8 meters long, and they don't sell the rails separately. Just make sure to get the ones that are rated for about 100 kilos of weight because the cheaper ones are usually only good for about 50 kilos and the rails on them are a lot shorter and a lot thinner. With that out of the way, let's get the frame in.
With the frame now put in, I'll get the front cover made from some leftover boards. This is really only for show and the rail is going to get bolted through this and into the 2x4s. And I think that looks pretty good to me. Finally, I'll have to get the ladder made. No surprises here, I wanted the ladder to be made out of wood, but wooden ladders aren't exactly commonplace anymore, so I had to go ahead and make it myself. What I have here is some hardwood decking, which I'll repurpose for the uprights, and I have some Tassie oak dowels for the rungs. The first thing I'll do is I'll get holes drilled in two of the pieces of wood for the rungs. And once the frame is starting to dry, I'll then glue another plane to the outside of each side to give it a bit more strength. And that's all going to be held in place by some glue and some dowels. The final thing left to do is modify the rollers so they can fit onto the ladder and then I can get it all screwed into place. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the completed project all done. It's been about a week, so I've had a bit of time to move out the old TV in for a new one that better fills up the space. I've also filled up the bookshelves with my books, and it's still looking a bit sparse. Although, I guess that's what happens when you go from a very small bookshelf to one that is effectively a wall. But on the whole, I am incredibly happy with how it's turned out. 
It's by no means perfect, but given my woodworking skills, I'll take these results any day of the week. In total, it took me about six weeks to get done, and I was able to do this without any help. And in total, is about $2,000 all up. But in the end, it's all in place, and I'll have many years to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.